Will robots eventually take the place of humans? In medicine, they're already taking over tasks that only a few years ago were exclusively in human hands. Robotics will play a major role in the future, especially in the field of rehabilitation. We're visiting the German Sport University Cologne. In the Rosyla NT project, a robot arm from KUKA is being used here for training purposes. Professor Kirsten Albracht explains to us why a robot is the right training partner for patients during rehabilitation. What's great about robotics is that we offer individual training for the patient. Artificial intelligence enables the robot to adapt to the patient. The robot gets to know the patient, training unit by training unit, and can adapt better to his load situation. The second important point is that robotics also allows me to monitor the load. This means that we can, or we hope to, exclude the possibility of overloading during training. For such monitoring, a musculoskeletal model, a so-called digital twin of the patient, must first be created. The motion capture system allows the movements of the user to be perceived precisely. Cameras are distributed throughout the room for this purpose. These capture the reflective markers which are attached to special anatomical locations on the patient's body. The measured values are then transferred to the computer model and offset against the forces. The patient then sees live on a monitor his load limits and which forces act on which joints. In this way, he can correct his movements accordingly. In addition, the robot can also react to prevent overloading of the joints. Another advantage is that the robot does not tire and is stronger than any human being. However, this also poses challenges. We have interaction forces of over a thousand to over two thousand newtons here. To make it safe was a great challenge. A protective mechanism is built into the system. If the patient does not generate any force, the robot does not move. It stands still immediately as soon as the user takes pressure from the sensor. For many, the large robot looks like a bit of a deterrent at first, but the response after training with it is positive. So far, we've had very good feedback from the users. At least what we've seen in surveys and conversations, all patients are looking forward to our robot. The main difference compared to conventional therapy and fitness equipment is that no specific weight is set on the device without knowing what load is actually applied to the joint. In addition, the movement path of the robot is not predetermined but corresponds to the habitual movements of the human joint. This ensures that the biological structures are not damaged. Such systems are of course also associated with high costs. Of course, the price always plays a role, but in the field of rehabilitation other very expensive devices are already being used today that are roughly comparable in price to this device. It's now known that such devices can also be used to improve or sensibly supplement therapy and guarantee a higher intensity so that robotics and the high costs of it pay off. A robot as a training partner. That's what the rehabilitation of the future looks like when it comes to Albrecht. From a vision point of view, I think we will only have robots in a so-called robo-gym. In principle, the robot can replace any training device you know from the rehabilitation center. Another vision of the researchers is to integrate biofeedback into virtual or augmented reality rather than playing it back to the patient via monitors. This would enable the patient to concentrate better on the training. All this makes the robot a unique training partner. Will it eventually replace the therapist? A robot will never be better than a therapist. It can only complement training or therapy in a meaningful way. And in the overall package, that is what the therapist does with the patient plus the robotics, we are able to offer a better therapy for the patient.